Hello everyone. We are out here checking out the garden on this beautiful, beautiful fall Virginia day. Um, we had a little bit of rain and more to come like always around here. Um, zone 7B, just in case you're new and you don't, you know, you don't know our zone, um, gardening zone. But yeah, I came out here and um, um, we try to, you know, look and see what's going on with the roses and the roses are still going here. Not, you know, not a lot. Um, some, the, the first, uh, the, the flush for fall, it already happened. Um, we didn't get to capture it all for you guys. We've been a little busy, but I still wanted to go ahead and show you what's, what's still happening. A little bit of something they're giving, you know, some of the roses are still giving those big, huge blooms that <laughs> it's, it, it seems like what, like if it's a spring and they're giving those beautiful, perfect blooms, but you know not quite in a huge flush anymore because it is going towards the end of it. So one of the roses that, you know, we always get a lot of questions about is Gertrude Jekyll Rose. It's a David Austin Rose. And I'm sorry if I butchered the, the, the name of the rose. I always do that. That's, that's how I say it. Um, but Gertrude um, Jekyll Rose is, we have three climbers. And um, I wanted to go ahead and answer a few of those questions. I did, I thought, I don't know if you were gonna come over here. We're, we're, I have Ambrose doing the camera right now, and, but we have um, very uneven um, ground right here. So it's probably just gonna be me then yep. on this one. No, okay, you, you'll, you'll probably be hearing him. Um, so Gertrude Jekyll, we have three climbers. Um, the ones that are right now blooming are the ones on this side, which is kind of, Northwest, you want to say, of the garden? Yeah, northwest. It's more north. Um, of course, is a rose that that we love because we live in an area where we have a lot of shade in our garden, and this rose can plant it near, you know, a maple tree, under a maple tree, and it still performs wonderful. Um, now, ours are in containers. That's a whole different video. We will talk about that later, um, but they have done amazing in containers. Um, but yeah, we get asked a lot. So one of the big questions is, when does it bloom? Um, does it bloom a lot? Is it a repeat bloomer? So for us, in the area we're in, Zone 7B, um, we get it, we get a very beautiful first blush, flush of roses in spring, of course. Um, it does amazing. It's one of the first, it's actually the first rose to bloom for us in our garden from all the other roses we have. That's the first one um, that, that starts to bloom. It just looks amazing. The rose, the flower is just huge and beautiful. The color that it gives is actually, maybe I want to say a little darker than this that we have right here. And we'll go ahead and put on some pictures so y'all can see them closer. And, and the form of the rose is just beautiful. And of course, I've always said, it's a very, very fragrant rose. One, one rose, one flower, and you, you know it's in bloom. Um, so yeah, then we have our second flush. After that, we probably, what, um, two, two weeks later, um, through all that, you know, first flush, you start seeing, uh, filling out again with more buds. Um, you still get a nice flush, nice flowers um, within that time. And then, you know, maybe towards the third flush, I'm going to say it's towards the beginning of summer. Um, the beginning of summer, you won't see, we don't see that much anymore. It's here and there, uh, more than what you see now. But, but it, it, it does have some blooms, but the blooms change. The blooms are getting a little smaller and the color of the bloom is this very light pink now. A very, not, not super light pink, but it's just a way lighter pink than what you see in the beginning. Um, very pretty though. And of course the bloom is a little smaller and I'm gonna say it's because you know the temperatures are picking up, it's getting warmer, it's the beginning of summer and then that's it. We don't get to see him no more. So I'm not sure if you're starting to see the little pattern here with this rose that it seems to bloom more when the weather is cool. Um, and I think, you know, that's what it is. It loves the cool weather, uh, you know, our experience. So that's what we've noticed. So here we are, you know, let's say um, I start to see it again. I start seeing it bloom again at the end of summer when we start to get cooler weather um, in the evenings. So you start, I start to see it bud up and it starts to bloom again. And then here we are in fall, way cooler, of course. And it, of course it's in bloom you know the blooms are big it has beautiful blooms the color is rich pink you can see it's rich 
very pretty pink. It still has that color, you know, very pretty. And we're still enjoying it, you know, it's just beautiful. So now, I know we get roses because we love the flowers, the shapes of the flowers, the colors, and that is just wonderful. And we would love to see roses bloom all the time. Wouldn't that just be amazing? And there are some roses that do that. We do have some of those roses. And later on in other videos, we'll talk more about those roses that are repeat bloomers. So um, let's talk about what um, some of us don't talk too much about because we go crazy about the flowers, um, the leaves. So if you're a first time, you know, new in, in, in growing roses, you know, um, that's something I noticed when we first um, started with the roses. I didn't pay too much attention to the leaves. Um, but it does matter a lot, the shape of the leaf. You start to know, as you start to grow roses, you start to, to, to start noticing the shape of the leaves, the color of the leaves. Are they darker green? Are they a lighter shade of green? And the one that's very important to me. Will these, are they very resist, uh, res, disease resistant roses? Will they be able to keep their leaves through the whole growing season? So Gertrude Je Jekyll takes us through through some of the guessing thing here and there um, every year. First year we were here, it's three years back. Um, it was awful. There was no leaves here. We, you know, we ended up getting soft light. It does get attacked real badly with that. So we, we knew immediately that we were going to have to spray. And I know when I say spray, a lot of people don't like this whole spray thing because they think right away, you know, um, um, that it's not in an organic manner or whatever. We try to keep it as organic as possible. We do spray with organic sprays um, and we try our best to keep, uh, stay on it. I'll go back to that about the spraying. Um, but when that happens, you know, that year, it was so sad to see that the rose had no leaves. Then the second year, um, last year, we had an amazing year through the whole growing season. This rose kept its leaves and they just looked amazing and just beautiful. Um, we did start to spray, you know, um, we learned that we needed to keep this guy on a spraying schedule. Um, this year, this year, we got hit again by soft light really bad and dropped all its leaves. Some of them have come back, as you can see. So now we're there, you know, where we have a little bit of leaf still. So to me, it's very important, you know, to pick out a rose. Where, where, where do you want the rose? That's what I always ask myself. Where are you going to plant that rose? These are climbers. If you want a rose that is going to be seen everywhere, you know, like say for instance, you want a climbing rose that's gonna go in the front of your, your door, the front door of the home, you know? You wanna go with a rose that is going to be a little more tough in, in um, disease resistance, you know? I do have a rose that, roses that keep their leaves actually through all winter. And that is amazing because even though when it's, they're not in bloom, there's something there, you know? It looks pretty to at least see some greenery, you know? So always think about that too, you know? I know Gertrude Jack was such a beautiful rose, but this is not the rose that I would put in a place where it's going to be seen all the time because you, I just don't know what to expect in our zone, in our area. So the reason we spray here quite a bit is because it rains a lot. We have very rainy weather here. So even though we spray, there are some times that we'll get constant rain. For example, in summer, there's this time that we literally have two weeks of constant rain. Um, whatever you spray is just gonna come off. And you can't keep spraying, you can't keep going outside and protecting your roses. It's just, you know, by the time you, the two weeks have passed, you already go outside and you see that there, we do have black spot already going on. Um, the humidity is high too. Um, so all that just, you know, we keep, we, can, we keep in our minds, we think about, and we get the black spot. And the black spot, you know, comes in and then we get other diseases too. We get, we get the saw fly. Um, and from there on, if you don't catch it right on time and spray it, that, that takes over. Now we did have a little bit of help this year. And I, I know Ambrose, um, he, he had a big deal to do with this, was bringing in more birds into the garden. That helped a whole lot. Um, having birds around, nature take care of it. You know, nature came in and helped us out. The birds were coming in and they were actually yep. picking, you would see them, right? Coming in and out of the roses. Yeah, so, so the birds hung out along the side of the garden for most most of the, the season. 
um, away from the bird feeders. Now, this area of the garden where we had the bird feeders, they weren't hanging around too much because they were more, more concerned with the food, but in other parts of the garden, you can see them hiding behind bushes along the, the house and just picking at every insect they could find over there. So it was, it was really beneficial to have them around yeah. here. And then we had, you know, uh, the, the gardens already, you know, three years, not that old, but, but even though we start, you know, we had tons of ladybugs. So ladybugs help with, you know, any other little insect there. Of course, that's not gonna help with the black spot, but it helped with, you know, any other insect. And sometimes that helps for the rose to be able to keep its leaves. So yeah, I don't know if I need to add anything else to this. Nope. Um, just trying to answer all the questions we got about Gertrude Jekyll people. Um, maybe talk about the, uh, so this is a three-year-old year, uh, three year old rose, um, and we will be uh, moving next year due to retirement. Yes. So um, at this point, we do want to transplant Gertrude Jekyll. Unfortunately, it's going to have to go another year before we get into another home and maybe put her in the ground or in a bigger container. But I think, I think more likely it's going to be in the ground because yeah. I would say three to four years is probably the max you want to push a rose in, in a container. A rose can keep going. I would say any any plant can keep going in a container as long as a container is a very big vessel. Um, I don't think we we want to go with a huge container yeah. where we you know we have a permanent garden. But the best thing would like always be putting them in the ground, like Ambrose said. That's that's that would be the yeah the natural thing, the good thing to do. Um, you want to touch rose. on the zones also about overwintering roses? I think that was one of the questions um, that we had as well. Yeah. So. At this point for us now here, we're in Virginia. Um, we're zone B, I'm gonna repeat that again. 7B. 7B. Um, um, it's still warm. So we let our roses, we keep on deadheading our roses mm -hmm. till the end of, till December. Yep. Uh, December comes, that's it, we're done. We're not touching these roses. We're not doing anything to them. We're gonna wait to do whatever we need to, the pruning and whatever, till, you know, the beginning of spring. That's, what is it, late winter, yes. whatever. Okay, we do that. So. Yeah, we're not, we're still deadheading right now. We have pretty weather. Um, that's it. We're not doing anything no more to it. We're not spraying anymore either. Yeah. We're not doing any of that. Overwintering, that's something that we're going to do a video on. Yep. Um, we do have them, whether it's in containers or not, we, we like to go ahead and refresh some of the soil and give them um, um, compost. Correct. We like to put some compost in, into the, the pots or in the area around the, the, the soil of the, the plant. And then we go ahead and mulch. It's really important to go ahead and mulch, especially if you live in an area where you get really cold winters. We're in a 7B. We do get snow and it can get cold. Um, we had a rough winter, yeah. past winter, and I think we're looking probably at one for this year too. So we're gonna keep that in mind and we're just gonna go ahead and mulch them really good. We do not have to take the containers, the ones that are in containers, into garage or cover them or anything. It doesn't get that cold for us here. As long as the containers are big enough and you know that, that same soil inside, it helps as an insulator for the roots. It helps them stay nice and warm, you know. Um, another tip I wanna give is water. If, you know, right now it's fall, um, there's wind. For us in our areas, it's very windy. Um, so you want to keep the soil, make sure that it doesn't dry out. Um, keep it, the, the wind does tend to go ahead and dry, especially containers, the soil, the, the potting soil in the containers. So keep them watered. And why is this important? Because when you're going to, when the ground, if you're the ground freezes where you live, that is very bad for roots. There's where you're going to get root damage and you might not see your rose come back the next following year. So it's really helpful that, these, that, that, that the soil is never ever dry um, before winter hits. And I think that that's what, that's it, right? Yeah, that's that's all it. we have. Covered everything. Um, you have any other questions, go ahead, you know. Um, we're here to answer. We're gonna go ahead and be doing all these other things like overwintering them, you know, show you what we do yep. um, later on. In a few weeks, um, y'all can you know go ahead and keep watching us, so y'all can see what we do. But that's really it. It's it's. I think it just becomes a routine, and you kind of just know what to do every every year. You know, um, right now we're just enjoying these beauties, and we thought you know why not go ahead and show them while they're still giving us something. It smells amazing, and I wish guys that you could smell this this beautiful beautiful rose. Um, Anything you want to say? Nope, that's it. <laughs> okay, so we'll see y'all later, guys. And if y'all have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below. Go ahead and subscribe. And go ahead and follow us on Instagram and Facebook because we're always showing pictures there. Ambrose in his camera. He's always taking amazing pictures of the whole garden. But the roses is what some of my favorite photos he takes. See y'all later.